Okay. Yeah, hello, I'm Philip, and I'm trying to show you that you can create a random city map in QGIS using the graphical modeler. And first, um, I like to start with a short quiz where I show you the, the outer boundaries of some cities with their dimensions and their inhabitants. And you can guess which city it is, so we get used to the shape of cities. And we start with with this one. Anybody has any idea which city this is? I can show you the districts and the population is 3.7 million. It's Berlin, right? Um, next one, it's this dimensions with 8.9 million. Any idea? That's London. Um, this one, Bratislava, that's right. Um, all of you should know. <laughs> um, and now, last but not least, um, we have this shape with a pop oh, the, 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 the dimensions are wrong. It's 10 kilometers times 10 kilometers and a population of 1.3 million inhabitants. That's Random City 27, uh, created by QGIS. Um, in detail, it can look like this. So we have parts where we have uh, single family housing and also those uh, bigger blocks in the city. And it's created with a monstrosity um, of 152 algorithms in the uh, graphic modeler. Um, but it starts quite easy with this simple field um, where we can select the, the width and the height, so the size of the city, the complexity, and we can decide how many or how big the proportion of planned uh, city quarters is and how many single housing there should be. We can decide the number of districts. We can choose the density of the buildings and the density of inhabitants. And I decided to run it in the background right now with um, those numbers. It's going to take a few minutes and while it's running is I'm trying to tell you what's, what has been done there. Um, it all starts quite simple with uh, random points inside a polygon. And then we draw a um, concave hull around it. And then again, we put random points inside a polygon and so on. And then we draw Voronoi poly polygons. And so we can have districts and uh, smaller quarters. And um, in, the, in the background, there's some field calculation with um, where there's a number um, of the selected, uh, how many planned urban structures there should be. Um, and from that, it, it calculates um, two grids, two random point grids, or one random point grids with the, with the red dots. That's the, are the unplanned districts or single housing, single family housing. And the grid is the, those, those planned squares, which we know maybe from Barcelona or some Ameri American cities. And then around all those points, again, we draw Voronoi polygons. Anybody know Voronoi polygons? So, some have no idea or? Okay. It's, you have a point and then you draw a circle around that point and when two circles intersect each other, then there's a line drawn, and so the boundaries of those polygons are created. Um, and so we, after that step, we finally have our um, city grid or, or urban grid, um, and we can put usage to, to the, those areas which we do again with a, we, we put a grid with, um, the, with hexagons and randomly select um, a certain number of those hexagons and give them, or uh, then we have a field in the, in the calculation where we can 
put the usage inside. In this case, the usage is um, agriculture. So inside this, those, this grid, um, there are selected a few of those hexagons and all areas beneath um, those hexagons selected get the usage of agricultural use. Um, so it finally looks like this. Um, so we have the yellow is an industry, the dark green is um, city green, so parks and so on. We have the lighter green, which is agriculture. Somewhere there should be a small C in the blue. There are two of them. Um, well, black are streets. Um, somewhere there should have be a forest. I can see right now it's too small. And it has the same color as the agriculture. That's a bad thing. Um, and all the, the pink stuff is um, normal urban use. And inside those areas, we again draw points. And around those points, we create rectangles, which are going to be the, the houses at the end. And we select um, all who are overlapping and delete them so that um, situations like this can't happen, but all houses not touching another house or, or rectangles not touching another rectangle are kept. And all this put together finally leads to this city grid. And then, of course, there are the accordingly um, attribute tables um, looking like this. So we have the kind of usage, we have the area of the houses and of the, um, of the areas. Um, we have an idea for ID for the district, we have the size of the districts, we have a quarter ID and um, a property ID at the end. Um, and for the houses, we have also the usage, we have um, the story, so how high those buildings are. We have the number of uh, inhabitants per, per building. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's what we can, can calculate. Um, the question now, let's have a look at our process. Um, the city we built looks now like this. And we can go to the symbology to categorize for the usage of the buildings. There we have them. Yeah, the colors are selected randomly, so I'm sorry that's not the nicest colors at the moment. Um, and also for the properties we can select by usage and then we can have a closer look. So we have those single family housing areas, we have those bigger areas, we have um, some industrial complexes where the, the houses are bigger um, and that's um, the result of all of that. So, but the, the, the great question is, or the big question is, why doing all this? And it's simple because um, in the next talk, um, I'm going to do some analysis using data from cities and the municipality I work for didn't want me to go here. So I decided I don't use their data and create my own. It could have been a point cloud, but it didn't look like a city and I wanted it to look like a city. And then I went down this rabbit hole and as you can see, it's all a lot of calculations. We're starting with a, with a rectangle. It's uh, in, this, uh, in, in this situation, it's um, the outer borders of, of Germany because I'm from Germany and I needed some outer borders. There we put a point, draw a rectangle, and then it's starting with point clouds, polygons around those point clouds, and then again and again and again. Um, and after we have the, the districts and quarters, we um, take the feature um, polygons to lines. So we take the border lines of the, of the quarters and districts and draw a buffer around them. So we have streets as well. Um, 
and at the end you have a, a city map with, with data that's similar enough to, to a real city to um, run your analysis and I found it quite useful because when we did some analyzing tools for our municipality, it worked for our data and then we tried to transfer it to another municipality and it didn't work because they had another dimensions, they had different situations with their properties and their buildings and in some kinds uh, just other data, so the data uh, names were different and so I decided if it's running on uh, randomized data a few times, it should run on, on every data there is available. Um, and th that, that was the, the, the first use case I found. And later on, um, uh, some colleague of mine told me that you can add shapefiles to Unity. So it's a game development software and you can just put, uh, put it up in 3D because you have a high value. And um, he created a Call of Duty map out of a randomized city. So uh, maybe that's um, something in the, in the future for um, game development or something. Um, in the end, it was a f more or less a, f a fun project for me because I, I, out of spite, I wanted to create a, my own city data. Um, so if you have any further idea how to use it, just just let me know. I'm I'm open for it. Um, yes, that's um, a quick round. I I wasn't quite sure how detailed I should um, tell you about all those algorithms. So I decided to to just name the the most important ones and um, let a more space at the at the question and answer section. So if you have questions on some of those calculations or algorithms, um, just let me know. It should be an interactive talk. All right. So that was cool. Thank you. Uh, so are there some questions? Hi, Michael. Um, I have a question regarding uh, the processing model. Um, in the yeah, long way to build this, this uh, complex model. Do you have any idea how to improve QGIS processing model, uh, the entries, the outputs, uh, how you can uh, do some conditional things? Uh, wh what is your, um, your understanding of processing modeling system and how to improve it if uh, it is needed? Uh, Thank you for the question. I have absolutely no skills in programming or whatsoever, but I know how to use those algorithms and some expressions. And from that on, it was a lot of try and error and a lot of YouTube <laughs> tutorials. Um, but it was, it was a fun project. So it's, with every step you learn something new and um, you, you find um, new functionalities in, in, in QGIS. Um, I didn't know that you can add random numbers, uh, for example, in the field calculator. I'm a big fan of it now because uh, it wouldn't be possible without random numbers. Um, and yeah, it's, it's learning by doing. Maybe, maybe the question can be also rephrased as like, have you found anything really annoying about the modeler? Like what should someone else fix? Yes, yes. Um, there is um, this part where I, I have those single family housing areas and those bigger blocks. And I want to have both. And it's done by a selection of the, the planned parts of the city. Um, and from there, it's, it, it has two ways. I, but I can't say there is no single family housing and I can't say there are no bigger blocks because once one of those both numbers is zero, the whole process breaks down. I tried it with um, conditions, but then also at the point where I put those two ways together again, 
then even with the condition it breaks down because it always says there's something missing. So that's kind of uh, annoying. Yep. Perfect presentation, thank you. And uh, it was really inspiring for me. Partly the, the process of generating a city is random, as you said. Yeah. And we, I think that cities are not random. So yeah. my kind of advice, if I may have, one would be to put some structural conditions when building the city, mm -hmm. just, in, just to be more similar to real city. Like, the, let's say density. Density is higher in the city center, and it goes down to the, uh, if you can go further from the city center, or neighborhoods of, diff, of, of the same kind of, uh, buildings, let's say. And this would be, I think, more useful then. Yeah. I think about um, splitting the whole process or um, starting it in a later point so I can draw a rectangle or, s or a shape of some kind and then put the density, especially for this, so I do it district by district. Um, and so I think I can, can reach that. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, the, a big problem that there is no, yeah, it's random. It's no, there's no urban planning logic b behind it. Um, but I think maybe next year or in two years with uh, ChatGPT and so on, uh, that's, that's possible. Some more questions? Is your model available somewhere or do you plan to make it available? Um, it's not available yet, but I'm I'm trying to make it available, but um, first um, I'm going to translate all the names uh, to, to English and that's going to take a while and also I've done it in my spare time, so there's no real documentation about it so, and that I have to change before I somehow publish it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's the idea. You made this thing, uh, this, this simulation based on, uh, as far as I saw, like a European city type. Uh, it's more like, do you plan to make it Asian or American also, or make different well, versions? Well, what we, what we can um, do with this part here, the, the, it's a number of planned city quarters, and by planned I mean those typical American quarters. Um, the higher the number is, um, the higher the percentage is uh, in, the, in, the, in the result, like we can see here, it should be around 50-50. It's, yeah, it's more like those bigger blocks, but that's going more... I, I know it's not the, the big European city, but more like a small village. Um, but yeah, there, there I have... They're missing a little bit the idea how to change that because um, even if you're, we are talking about European cities like um, Paris is whole different than Bratislava, Berlin is the perfect example of the western part and the eastern part. Of there are two ways of urban planning colliding and yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to, to put it in, but uh, I'm missing the idea. Have you uh, considered uh, converting the, the model into a script? No, not I, I've, I've um, it struck my mind, but then I remembered I can't uh, I can <laughs> I can code hello world or print hello world and that's it so that's what was never really an option. Mm. We had a, a, a big model at, uh, at my work. Uh, it took forever two and a half uh, cups of coffee to, to process. And uh, then I t converted it into a script just by yeah, clicking the script button. And it was 30 seconds, I guess. Okay. So you might save a lot of time doing okay, that. Okay, maybe, maybe. But I must say, this city now we, we created is, or this map we created is uh, five kilometers times five kilometers. It took a minute or something. Um, on the way here to Bratislava, I tried the biggest. I've ever tried, it was uh, 25 kilometers times 25 kilometers, and it took only 17 minutes, so for the numbers of calculations, and it, it had, it had um, 17 million inhabitants, so it, it was a lot of calculation, um, but it, it's okay, I think, from the time I'm running. But I'm trying with the script, yes. Some more questions? 
We still have time. Thank you. Have you tried using uh, the mesh uh, data type uh, instead of vector uh, data for all the, this looks like a mesh uh, yeah. from yeah, no, no, I haven't. I haven't. Maybe I showed it. I, I, I started with first. I started with a with a random a rectangle of a random size and just a, a point cloud inside. And from there, I took algorithms I knew and tried to, to put it in there. And I have never worked with mesh, so but I should try. Yeah. You have inspired me that maybe in some future QGIS conference we could do a contest for like the biggest model you can do. Uh, maybe. Some more questions? Yeah, yeah uh, maybe it would be interesting if you could, let's say, add, um, let's say, a river or something and let's say, uh, it would be interesting to have like a real place yeah. with some real conditions like a river or a hill or something and then have a random city there yeah. and then you could kind of compare what what people did and what the random uh, randomness did uh, with the same constraints. Yeah. The idea I, I had um, and when, when Kurt uh, spoke at the opening ceremony was to run the model inside of an uh, existing shape like Berlin or Bratislava, and then just let it create a new Berlin inside of Berlin and to, to take a comparison. Um, but I haven't done it yet. And the elevation is, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it, but I, again, there, I, um, yeah. Yeah, if I'm taking an exist, uh, existing country or city, it's possible, but I thought about creating my own elevation levels <laughs> again randomly, but that's now that then you have 20 meters to zero meters, so it's, <laughs> it's complicated. <laughs> Do you have your favorite random city? Um, no, not really. Um, they, they are all different, and there sometimes the, the, the program is is a little bit stupid and sometimes uh, some some cities are are looking more naturally and then there are some randomly which is which you see and say that's never possible it's like it's when the point cloud is not evenly spread you can have 10 kilometers times 10 kilometers in as uh, the the parameters but the point cloud is very small and then it's just like one large, uh, small thing with 500 meters in height, but 10 kilometers long. It's All right, cool. Maybe one last question, if there is any. Uh, but if not, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we have a small present for you, and thank you. <laughs>